Today I'm going to tell you about Byzantine history in Sicily and how its legacy we can still see today. As the Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century, Sicily suffered from regular pirate raids by the Vandals. Vandals invaded Sicily and North Africa in 440 AD, led by Genseric. Odoacer controlled the majority of Sicily in 476. Theodoric ruled Sicily, pushed back a Vandal invasion and took over the last Vandal outpost of Lilibium in 491, which is now Marsala. The Gothic War raged between the Ostrogoth and the Byzantine Empire, also known as the Eastern Roman Empire. Sicily was a Byzantine island in 535 as a result of being conquered by Belisarius. Syracuse was a Byzantine key western outpost in dominating the Mediterranean. To learn more about La Bella Sicilia, consider subscribing. The Byzantine Emperor Constans II planned to move his capital from Constantinople to Syracuse in 663 and he also wanted to use Sicily as a base to attack the Italian mainland. But for all this ambition, he was assassinated. The Muslim threat increased in the 8th century as the Muslims tightened their grip on North Africa and Hispania, which is Spain. Abd al-Rahman al-Firi made a failed attempt to, to capture Sicily and Sardinia between 752 and 753, largely due to disagreements between their forces and their leaders. In 805, Ibrahim ibn al-Aglab of the Aglabid dynasty in Tunisia agreed a truce with the Byzantine rulers of Sicily. The Muslim conquest of Sicily began in earnest in 827 as the Byzantine commander of the fleet, Euphemius, fell out with his emperor, Michael II. Euphemius was driven from Sicily by the emperor's supporters and instead sought Aglabid support. The Aglabids took up this opportunity and decided to help Euphemius. But having landed their Muslim forces in Mazara, Euphemius was quickly discarded. A siege on Syracuse was repelled by Justiniano Participazio of Venice and then an outbreak of disease stopped the campaign. The Muslim army divided between Agrigento and Enna. Theodotus led a fleet to Sicily in 829 to break this Muslim siege of Enna. Theodotus was defeated, but did still manage to enter Enna. The Muslims made a stand in nearby Mineo, but Theodotus was happy to starve them out. Hearing of the blockade in Mineo, the Muslim garrison in Agrigento retreated to Mazara in the west and by 829, Sicily was nearly liberated. In 830, a fleet from Al-Andalus, southern Spain, arrived in Mineo to join the troops blockaded in. Fearing a trap, Theodotus fled to Enna and the siege of Mineo was over. Mineo was promptly torched the Muslims were now in full retreat and under heavy attack from Theodotus' forces. He died during this period. The Muslim forces of Mazara commenced a year-long siege of Palermo. The commander, Simeon, surrendered in return for the safe passage of key officials. The city's bishop fled to Constantinople. Palermo was devastated by the siege and the surviving population were taken as slaves. 
In all, this was a catastrophic defeat for the Byzantine forces, whereas the Muslims had gained a key military base, a new capital for the new Muslim territory, which was named as al Madina, the city. In 832, the Aglubid governor, Abu Fir Muhammad ibn Abdallah, arrived in Palermo to mediate between the rival factions. A challenge indeed. Western Sicily fell quickly into Aglubid hands, but Eastern Sicily resisted. The Arabs progressively attacked the Byzantine outposts across the island. Predictably, Enna was the key Byzantine stronghold in the centre of Sicily. Muhammad ibn Salim led a failed campaign against eastern Sicily. Internal squabbles continued to slow progress and the leader Abu Fir was murdered. al fadl im Yaqub immediately attacked Syracuse and Enna, and to a fashion, routed the Byzantine forces. A support Byzantine fleet finally arrived and heavily degraded the small Muslim fleet on its way to Palermo. An Aglubid campaign near Mount, near Mount Etna torched the villages, the crops and, and abducted slaves. In 836, a Muslim fleet raided the Aeolian Islands and took a number of locations, including nearby Tindaris, Tindari on the Sicilian mainland. In 837, an Aglubid army was beaten back from Enna, and the leader, Abd al-Salam ibn Ab al-Wahhab, was taken prisoner. After a prolonged standoff, the Byzantines paid a large ransom of Muslim withdrawal and safe passage. Theophilus ordered a major campaign to liberate Sicily, led by Caesar Alexios Morsele in 838. He broke the siege of Cefalu and began to register successes, but was subject to a whispering campaign in Constantinople by his jealous rivals. He fell out with Theophilus and the emperor demanded he return to Constantinople in 839. Morsele's departure triggered a number of reverses at Corleone, Platani, Caltabellotta. Naples bolstered a Muslim attack on Messina in 843 and Modica in 845. The Byzantines were reinforced from the east only to suffer further crushing defeats at Butera, Leontini and Ragusa. A further Byzantine attack on Palermo failed as most of the accompanying navy was lost in a storm. The Muslim governor, Abul Aglab al-Abbas ibn al-Fadl, went on to devastate Valdinotto between 852 and 853. Butera eventually accepted terms and paid ransom after a long siege. Cefalu was destroyed in 857, whereas Galliano survived. Predictably, Enna was the key Byzantine outpost until it finally fell in 859 as a result of a sneak attack. This was a catastrophic strategic defeat which pushed back the Byzantines to Syracuse and Taormina on the east coast. A large Byzantine fleet led by Constantine Contomites failed to liber liberate Sicily and suffered enormous casualties. Kafaya ibn Sufyan's son, Muhammad, failed in a raid near Syracuse in 863 
but did manage to capture Norto and Sicli. In 867, Nicetas Orifas was sent back to break the siege of Ragusa. A second Byzantine fleet was crushed by Kafaya, leaving Syracuse exposed. In 869, Kafaya's son, Mohammed, failed in attacks on Taumina and Syracuse. The Byzantines beat back the forces of both Kafaya and Mohammed, forcing an Aglabid retreat and inflicting heavy casualties. The Aglabids finally held Reggio, Calabria and Malta and could blockade Sicily. Ibrahim II renewed a nine-month siege on Syracuse. The Muslims finally sacked the city in 878. The population of Syracuse were either slaughtered or enslaved, and looting continued for a very long time. The Byzantine Empire was the Eastern Roman Empire, whose capital was Byzantium, later Constantinople. It maintained Greek, Roman and Latin culture during the Dark Ages. The Byzantine Empire was Orthodox Christian, but was typically, but not always, tolerant of other religions. The Byzantine culture was essentially Greek, but heavily influenced by the Eastern Mediterranean. Justinian's legal code was really influential across legal systems for some time to come. A unique hybrid of Byzantine, Arab, Norman art developed in Sicily, which is still found today. The Byzantine cultural influence outlived the Byzantine rule of Sicily, for example at the cathedrals in Monreale and Cefalù. Vulgar Latin and Greek evolved with Arabic and Norman influences to create modern day Sicilian. While there was trade and immigration, Sicily was not actively colonised during the Byzantine period as others had done. <laughs>